I thought I would go ahead and film a favorites video today since it's been a couple months since I've done one. Some of these items are going to be repetitive, but you know, you love what you love. <laughs> and that's what I've been loving and using at the moment. So I'm just going to go ahead and mention them again. <laughs> and one of those items is the Maybelline Master Holographic Prismatic Highlighter in 050. I know you guys have seen this a couple times <laughs> in my videos, but I really can't stop putting this down. I was like that for the wet with the Wet n Wild one. It's a dupe for Dior for quite some while. I still reach for that a lot too, but there's something about this one that gives a wet glazed look to the top of my cheekbones. Um, I think if you were to first swatch this um, on your hands, you wouldn't really like it because it comes off kind of chunky. Um, you have to really buff it into the skin to get that effect. It does have very, very fine micro glitters in it along with some really, really pretty holographic shimmers. So if you don't like micro glitters, you won't like this one, but they are very, very fine. The key with this guy is to really buff the product into the skin and it gives that glazed look. I've got it on my cheekbones today and kind of on some of the high points. I do have a backup of this in my drawer. Um, the formula for this guy is very similar to the Kat Von D Extreme Highlighter Palette that came out. I really love that as well. I have a backup of the Kat Von D palette and I use that center shade quite a bit. If you put a brush in here, the chunks, it will come off chunky. You can kind of see the chunks uh, right there. It's when, and my, my skin's really dry here, but it's when you really buff it into the skin that you get that wet, shiny look. And the thing about it is you can kind of see your skin through this product where a lot of the highlighters that are really extreme that have been coming out, they're really in your face they kind of cover up the skin. This kind of allows your skin to, sh to show through it, which is something I really love about it. So anyway, this next product I've been using for years and I don't think I've mentioned it maybe but one time on my channel and I kind of feel like it's worth a mention. <laughs> this is the Paula's Choice Lip and Body Treatment Balm. Uh, this has been my go-to lip balm for years, I think since this particular product launched. And I've tried, um, I've tried La Mer, I've tried Balm de Rose from By Terry, I've tried the Dior Rose Balm, all the ones that people have kind of raved about, I've tried them, and those are nice lip balms too, but this is the only one that I can put on at night that will still be on my lips when I wake up in the morning. It keeps them really hydrated, which is something that I need for where I live, because the climate's really, really dry and really, really cold in the wintertime. <laughs> this particular one is almost done. I've also used the corresponding lip scrub, also from Paula's Choice on my lips. I use it like once a week in the shower. Um, if if I don't use that, I, I like to use exfoliating like grain type cleanser powders, th those type of deals. <laughs> and I'll run those over my lips too, but um, the Paula's Choice Lip Exfoliant goes really, really well with this guy right here, but I would caution on using the exfoliator too much. You don't want to exfoliate the skin on your lips too often, but this is a really great, great lip balm and I think it's only like $7. This next product is by the brand Replica and it is a fragrance called By the Fireplace. And this is, one, again, one of those products, kind of like the lip balm that I've been using and loving for a while, but I haven't ever mentioned it in a video. Like, I really, really like this perfume. It smells legitimately like burnt marshmallows by the fireplace. Kind of like you're roasting marshmallows, that smell of fire and burnt marshmallow. <laughs> and sometimes I like to smell like a burnt marshmallow, <laughs> especially when it's like 30, 40 degrees below zero and it's like blizzardy and stuff outside. I really like to wear this perfume. It makes me feel kind of all cozy and stuff like that. I don't wear it too often in the summertime, but I do wear it a lot in the cold months. It's just a really good one. So if you like the smell of burnt marshmallows, give this guy a try. <laughs> Another skincare product. This is the Siam C's Yen Heal and Hydrate Toner Refresh Reset protect. Um, I purchased this in the smaller bottle first and I love it. I kind of use it like an essence and it actually says on the back of the bottle that it helps to enhance with the delivery of nutrients from your other products and I feel like this does that. I use it after I wash my face, I put on my treatment products, which is like different mixed with benzoyl peroxide, and those tend to be drying, but I do have acne prone skin. So after those, I put like four pumps of this in my hand and just rub them together and pat it over my face before I put serums on and stuff like that. And I really feel like my skin's been more hydrated since I started using this. I think the number one ingredient in here is aloe vera. Um, the one thing that I wish was I was able to spray this on my face throughout the day. And you would kind of think that the bottle would be the problem, but it's the formula. It's it's thicker so it doesn't come out in a fine mist. Um, I've tried like depotting or putting this in a different bottle that I know sprays a fine mist and because of the formula 
even in that other bottle that puts such a nice fine mist out, it comes out in a straight shot. So I do have to put this in my hands and pat it on my face. I can't use it like throughout the day as a as a spray. It says you can do it like that, but it comes out in like a straight shot. Like, <laughs> so, but it's a really, really nice product. It's, um, I got the big size bottle because I'm a member of the Beauty Heroes uh, subscription box. I've, I've really been into natural skincare products and I subscribed to the Beauty Heroes subscription box because I found out that they sold Mahalo skincare. And if you're a subscriber to their box, you get 15% 15 off their whole website. So I was like, I think it's worth it because <laughs> I buy so much, so many Mahalo products, but this is a really, really nice like essence type product to put on before you put your serums on. I feel like it does what it says and helps deliver those nutrients like deeper into the skin. I really like it. So again, that's the Siam C's Yen Heal and Hydrate Toner. This next product is a concealer and it's by Estee Lauder. It's the Double Wear Custom Coverage Correcting Duo. It's supposed to be like a corrector, but it's that really light pink color that matches my skin tone really well. I have a really strong pink undertone. Um, I've gone through several bottles of the Urban Decay Color Correcting Fluid in pink. This is like my perfect shade of concealer for underneath the eye. Uh, the Estee Lauder Water one is ever so slightly darker and it's got a bit more coverage than the Urban Decay. I still use this Urban Decay quite a bit, but lately I've been reaching for the Estee Lauder one because it does have more coverage and it blends out really, really nice and it's thin. So it covers, but it's thin. So I really like the way that it looks underneath the eyes. It has two sides. One is full and the other one is light. Um, typically I'll take a swipe of the full and then I'll flip it over and do a swipe of the light. Um, the light one is lighter and the full one is fuller, but I've just been mixing them to kind of get a medium-ish. <laughs> this does have more coverage than uh, Urban Decay, but so here's the light one and this one has a brush on it. And then the other side is called full and it's got a doe foot applicator. I'll swatch it next to the Urban Decay too because Urban Decay is a bit lighter in terms of color. So here is Urban Decay right here. And then there's Estee Lauder. And since I've been using like a little bit darker foundation, that Bare Minerals, I've been liking the Estee Lauder underneath my eyes a little bit more and it has a little bit more coverage. But the consistency of this Estee Lauder is really, really pretty. If you're used to something like Tarte Shape Tape though, that for me, I've, I do like that concealer, but it's too thick and it's too drying for underneath my eyes for me. I just feel like you can just see it and I just don't care for that look. Every once in a while, if my skin's really good and hydrated, I'll use it for a little extra coverage, but typically I don't use it by itself. I'll mix it with something that's a little bit thinner because again, it looks a little bit heavy. So if you're used to something with that high of a coverage, the Estee Lauder isn't gonna have as much coverage as something like the Tarte Shape Tape. <laughs> I've got two lipsticks next, and one is by Tom Ford, and it's what I have on my lips today. It's very similar to the shade Olivier, which came out with his original uh, Lips and Boys collection. The difference is, is Olivier's got some really fine, like, micro shimmers in it, where this one doesn't, and it's in the shade Dakota, number eight. I've really been enjoying this lipstick lately. It's just a really cool baby pink shade. And it's really glossy and shiny. So that's the shade Dakota. And then the other lipstick, which I've been wearing, I've had this for a while and I just kind of forgot about it, but it's a really, really pretty pink nude. And this is Charlotte Tilbury's Kim KW. It's her cream formula. And it looks like that. I've been wearing this a ton with Charlotte Tilbury's Lip Cheat in the shade Pillow Talk. So those are my probably my two most worn lipsticks. Next up, I've got some brushes. These are relatively new, but I really, really love them. I use them like every single day. And these are from Sonia G. They are exclusive to Beautylish. They are handmade in Japan. Um, this is like such a pretty shape for a fan brush. It's like thick, but it's pointed. So what I like to do use with it is bronzer. You can see it's pretty dirty. <laughs> I use it like every day for bronzer. It gets nicely in the hollows of my cheek with this portion, and then I can kind of use it on its side for like my forehead, and then it does a nice job of getting underneath my chin. Super, super so soft brush, and it's got like such a pretty handle. This is a really nice brush. I kind of feel like... I'm gonna end up owning another one at some point here. <laughs> the name on that one is called the Sculpt One. I actually just ordered the little fan brush from the uh, Sonia G as well. It hasn't gotten here yet. I think it's supposed to be here on Monday, but the other one is the Worker One, and I did purchase two of these brushes here. 
super super soft again the pretty handle i like to use it to blend out the color right here on my eyes i feel like calling it worker one is a good name for it because it's it's very versatile because it's got a slight pinch to it so if you wanted to like and you had a cloth to just dust off colors i feel like you could do an entire eye look with just this brush because it fits in the crease it blends out it does a nice job if you want to lay it and use it more flat on your lid i think if you had to you could get away with using just this one brush to do an entire eye look and it's super super soft so I love that and the handle on her brushes they just feel so exquisite and then I like the little attention to detail it's got a little logo on there then getting into some bronzers this next product is it just makes me happy because of how nice it goes on my skin and that is the balm take home the bronze anti orange bronzer and this is in the shade Oscar and I just watched a video from Emily Noel and she had mentioned one of these and then she mentioned that they changed the names on the website and I don't know if they've changed like all of them this was sent to me in PR so it does have the name Oscar on it I don't know what the back history is on all of that but there's three bronzers in this collection this is the lightest one <laughs> and it's a matte bronzer that doesn't pull orange I've got it on as bronzer today on my face and then you can concentrate it and put it on just a little bit heavier in the back of the cheekbone and it gives a really pretty contour without like any muddiness and it doesn't show up orange on my pale skin it's just a really really nice product again it's a matte color mine already looks kind of cruddy but this product is super nice again there are three shades in the line this one here it, it's kind of been hard for me to pull away from this one but the next one I'm going to show you I've been using two I've been going back and forth between this one and the Too Faced Unicorn Tears Iridescent Mystical Bronzer and when I did my last haul video I totally spaced out hauling this I purchased this with that co mystical collection as well and I think some people were kind of thrown off by the purple unicorn that's inside of here but when I swirl my brush all together and the whole thing I actually feel like the purple makes the bronzer pull a little bit more red or more sun-kissed on my skin tone which I really like um, if I were to compare it to something I think it's really similar to the Too Faced Sun Bunny bronzer this has a sheen to it so if I want more of a glowy look I've been reaching for this guy as opposed to the balm one but since I've been packing on so much Maybelline highlighter I've been reaching for the balm one a little bit more than this one but I kind of been going back and forth between the two <laughs> and this actually does have a light vanilla scent to it as well I've actually been through an entire Sun Bunny bronzer back in the day so I did used to use that a lot and this is comparable to that particular bronzer from Too Faced I really like the one that came out with the gold collection too in that brown compact I was using that a ton for a while as well but uh, let's give you a swatch of this guy the unicorn is kind of forming hard pan on it but so you can see it's a, it's shinier and it's got a little bit more of a burnt look to it compared to the Oscar one from the balm but these are currently I've just been using these two bronzers non-stop and then definitely at the risk of sounding like a broken record, <laughs> I still can't get enough of Benefit's California blush. And I've seen that they came out with another, I can tell that it's a baked jelly texture. I haven't seen it in the flesh, but from the pictures that I've seen, I can't remember the name of it, but they just released a palette on Sephora, which has the new blush in it. It's like a bronzy type of color. Anyway, besides the point, I just still can't get enough of this blush. I reach for it at least once a week still. And I've had this for, well, I've had it since it came out. I got it in a palette first and then I loved it so much that I wanted it to be a little bit more travel friendly because this is a blush that I bring with me if I go like anywhere. Um, so I bought it in this size. So again, it's got that jelly texture. It's just the prettiest coral blush. It's so pretty. So that's Benefits California. And then the other one that I've been using a lot is Max Extra Dimension Blush in Into the Pink. This is what it's called. And this is also like that jelly type of uh, formula. This has got a lot more shimmer to it than like something like the Benefit one. But this is so pretty on the cheeks as well. I love the In Extra Dimension finish from MAC on the skin. It just looks so, so nice. Very, very shiny. And I reach for this quite a bit. Just It just makes the skin look really healthy. Both of these blushes do. So that is MAC's Extra Dimension Blush in Into the Pink. This next blush is kind of like a rediscovered in my collection. It's OG awesome. <laughs> and that's the Dior Rosy Glow 001 Petal Blush. This has been out for quite a while. Um, I grabbed for it like... 
I want to say like three weeks ago or something like that and I just haven't put it back I've been reaching for it a lot especially since like well it doesn't look like anything like spring outside at my house <laughs> but we're supposed to be getting into spring so it gives me spring vibes uh, this is what the shade looks like it's supposed to like be universal on different skin tones it's supposed to like transform to your perfect perfect pink color for me it's just a really pretty pastel baby pink shade it goes really well with like the colors that I have on today actually but um, and it's a matte finish blush out of my whole collection, this is probably one of my favorite, like, baby pinks. And of course, it doesn't look like nothing much on the hand, but it's got a slight hint of, like, a, a purple, purpleness to it, I think. But So that's Dior's Rosy Glow. I wasn't quite sure what to expect with this next product. Um, I'm such a big fan of the Viseart eyeshadow formula. So I, when I got this loose setting powder, it was sent to me from Muse Beauty Pro. Um, I wasn't quite sure what to expect. I guess I shouldn't expect anything less than greatness, right? <laughs> but um, I've really been enjoying using this underneath the eyes. It's just called the setting powder and it has got a really, really strong set to it. Like I find that my concealer does not migrate up underneath um, into my little eye crinkles, which is like one of the good points about it and also makes underneath the eyes look really, really smooth. It doesn't quite give me the brightening effect as some of the other powders I've been using for a while, but it gives a nice smooth look underneath the eyes and it also my concealer just stays put really really well so I do really like this I'm not nuts about the packaging like because it's got one of those little stoppers and a screen which helps with messiness but um, I like to get my my brush pretty coated with powder to tap it over the concealer because I find that if I don't have enough powder on my brush when I try to set my concealer the brush will actually grab some of the concealer so I typically like to have quite a bit of powder on my brush when I'm setting my face in general I guess but uh, the product itself is really nice I just be sure to shake up the tin so enough product gets caught in that little mesh screen but it's a really nice setting powder and then I've got another highlighter this is the Ofra highlighter in pillow talk I think it's their most recent launch in terms of their highlighter range I have the one that's really kind of a stark white shade but this guy here it's it's a very pretty highlight on for my light skin tone. It's light enough, it gives a lifting effect, and it's really, really shiny. This one is much more opaque than the Maybelline one. The Maybelline really lets your skin shine through it. This one's more opaque and gives like a, a frosty sheen to the top of the cheekbones, which I also like. <laughs> um, and it's got a slight pink tint to it as opposed to that other one that I have. And I've been using it quite a bit. I was surprised because I have the other Ofra one, and I do like that one as well, but I haven't reached for it kind of like I reached for this one. So that is Ofra's uh, Pillow Talk highlighter. And then into some shadows. Um, I have to mention this because I've really been using it a lot. I was using Burberry's Trench for quite a while. And then since that's like, I kind of want to use it up, but I kind of want to hang on to it because that's like an, a classic shadow that they discontinued too and I've hit pan and... Anyway, long story short, um, I got the Wet n Wild Brulee eyeshadow. This is in the new packaging. It's got a new formula. This one's a little bit more powdery than the old one, which I have as well, but I feel like the color's pretty much the same. I've got it underneath my brow bone today, um, and it's just a really good eyeshadow to have. I've noticed that quite a few shadow palettes, it's a matte, by the way, quite a few shadow palettes that have been coming out um, don't really have a matte brow bone highlight for my skin tone so this really has come in handy. I've got a pretty good dip in this guy right here so when I was in Walmart the other day I purchased another one. They're 97 cents can't beat it. And then next up I've got Makeup Forever's new Artist eyeshadows. They reformulated them. I still absolutely love the old Artist eyeshadow formula, particularly their mattes. I've got a whole like great big palette full of their matte eyeshadows. Um, I do want to at some point get all of their new matte formula, um, but for now this is what I have. Down here are the diamond shades. Those are nice, but I'm not crazy about them as I am with the, their matte formula. These are super pigmented, they blend really nice. They're just a super, super reliable matte eyeshadow. You guys have heard me say before that Viseart and Makeup Forever mattes are like top notch for me. They're the, probably my most used and now creeping up on them, which I also love, are the Colored Rain matte eyeshadows or the Colored Rain shadows in general. Their shimmers are knockout too. <laughs> There's a matte orange shade that's been out of stock on the Sephora website since these launched. So I'm like, where are you gonna ever come back with that shade? <laughs> because I really want to pick it up. Um, but like your red, 
is red. It doesn't pull pink. Um, the shades are really true to color. And again, they're super pigmented, super blendable. Um, I got tons of light shades. I accidentally purchased two of these two shades right here, which is okay because I tend to use them a lot for blending out color. Yesterday, I used the Pat McGrath shiny green shadow. And then I used um, this matte green and this yellow and then this underneath the brow. And the look turned out so pretty. I did feel like I was going to a Green Bay Packer game, <laughs> but it looked really cool. Anyway, let me give you some swatches of these. So let's do like, let's do these bright ones. Oh, and this color right here, let me tell you which one this is. This is M624. One of the prettiest, most unique purples that I have come across and it's matte and it's not like super gritty. Matte purples are really hard to do. Actually like matte or purple eyeshadows in general are hard to do, let alone a matte one. And that one is so nice. Anyway, uh, give them a try, head to the store, do some swatches super nice shadows so there are four of the shades right there wicked 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 so makeup forever matte eyeshadows two thumbs way way up I just realized that this is also a Makeup Forever eyeshadow palette. <laughs> this is the Starlit Glitter palette. I like to use these eyeshadows with the mattes or like these are what I like to put on the lid. This color right here, Prism, is super, super unique. This type of formula is kind of similar to like that Maybelline highlighter. It's got like a glossy effect to it. These have got more, a little bit more like pigmentation than the Maybelline highlighter. They're a little bit more opaque than that, but they have a wet look to them. They're super, super pretty. Um, this, this shade right here and this guy, and then this, they're probably my favorite ones. These browns are pretty too, but I really have been enjoying this eyeshadow palette. So they're shiny and glittery, but they also look wet. And I thought that I was gonna get a lot more fallout when I had first uh, like seen these, and they don't. They have very, very little fallout to them. The glitter adheres really well. And over a sticky base, like, oh, they, the intensity is just so pretty. So I've really been enjoying this guy right here. That's the Makeup Forever Starlit Glitter Palette. And then I've got a fail. This is the Too Faced Unicorn Tears Mystical Effects Highlighting Stick. Um, I've tried it again, and it just makes the top of my cheekbones look bruised. I tried a different powder over the top. Um, it's just too blue. <laughs> it's too blue for the top of the cheekbones, and it's supposed to be a highlighting stick, and typically you put a highlighter on the top of the cheekbones. I kind of wish I would have purchased the pink one. Um, the packaging is super cute. Uh, I kept the box because I will be sending it back, but the, hue, the blue hue uh, undertone is just too strong. I mean, it does look really pretty, though, doesn't it? So that's all I have for favorites and then one fail. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and found it helpful. Thank you for watching. Do not forget to wear sunscreen and I'll see you guys later. Bye.